So our weekly updates as usual and I will start with uh, Lambda Labs. Uh, I was recommending Lambda Labs uh, uh, to many people. It's, it's a great company and they provide uh, GPU servers. Uh, they sell them and rent them and they already received 230 million uh, earlier C Series C funding and now they added another half a billion to expand the GPU cloud which is quite amazing and if you go on their website lambdalabs.com you will see that they offer you to reserve uh, NVIDIA GH200 right uh, so 576 gigabyte of coherent memory so re remember the previous cards like H100 or before that A100 they had only 80 gigabytes so here we have 576 so what is it so this is the card and it contains CPU and GPU so it's a Grace CPU and Hopper uh, GPU uh, so Grace Hopper was a famous <laughs> computer person it's, uh, she was a woman and uh, she created COBOL language for mainframe and uh, they named CPU and GPU after her so it has uh, memory 576 coherent memory what what is this? So coherent memory is very similar to Apple Silicon Unified memory. So it's memory which is shared between GPU and CPU. Both of them can see it, both of them can change it. And uh, if, if you look at a regular computer with regular NVIDIA card, so you have system memory called RAM and you have uh, GPU memory and you constantly need to move um, data between uh, system memory and GPU memory. But with the coherent memory or Apple Silicon Unified memory, you don't have this problem. You don't need to move anything between them because they're the same thing. Uh, now, 576 of uh, Unified memory, this is great. This is like a record. Uh, Apple Silicon Unified memory, well, you can uh, buy... Uh, like, for example, my current computer has 32 gigabytes, uh, but the new ones you can buy up to 128 gigabytes for laptop or 192 gigabytes for studio or pro computer. And the studio is really small and laptop also small and light. So uh, you see Apple is a great tool and Apple has MLX framework, uh, which kind of mimics uh, CUDA a library for NVIDIA GPU, so it's very convenient, things run very fast. Uh, I still believe Apple is <laughs> the best computer for data science. Anyway, uh, April 1st, uh, I tried to find when it was invented. It goes back centuries, nobody knows for sure. You can look Wikipedia article, but well, a little bit late, but happy Fool's Day. Uh, Ahmad Mostak has left Stability AI. So he is a legendary figure. He was in finance, then he moved to nonprofits and open source, and he created Stability AI, and he suddenly left, uh, which was strange and unexpected. So Peter Diamandis uh, has interviewed him, and Peter Diamandis, again, it's another legend um, who created multiple. Uh, uh, X Prize uh, context uh, creating innovation stuff. So um, it's very interesting. I recommend you to go to Diamond's blog. It's actually posted on YouTube. The whole interview is more than two hours. And uh, Ahmad uh, notes that he's great at uh, taking creatives, developers, researchers, others achieve their full potential. But uh, he had difficulty dealing with like being executive of a big company because it grew to have uh, hundreds of people and uh, <laughs> he recounted Elon Musk's quote about what's like to being a CEO staring into the abyss and chewing glass and uh, now that he's stepped down uh, he feels relief and his new direction is uh, uh, to do uh, decentralized AI so he believes that uh, we have a very short video, a short uh, period of time bef before big companies may take over and that we need to use it uh, to uh, create a real open source and decentralized uh, AI. Well, I don't know the details yet, but this is very interesting. And, and, and by the way, uh, several people, his top developers also left uh, to follow him. Uh, 
craziest talent war. So you have Elon Musk and uh, with his uh, Tesla and XAI who are developing AI technologies, you have OpenAI and uh, you have uh, Meta. So these are uh, only three, but there are also others. And Elon Musk says competition for AI engineers is the craziest talent war I've ever seen. He said that he's raising salary for Tesla's AI engineering team uh, because they're being seduced <laughs> like, uh, by open AI. Uh, you see, several Tesla engineers have been uh, poached by Musk's own XAI, including uh, Ethan Knight, who Musk said was originally set to join open AI, but then they kept him by offering him more money and moving him into actual AI work. Uh, also making AI talent poaching headlines and Mark Zuckerberg who reportedly recently emailed several Google DeepMind employees to recruit for Meta. So yes, it's, it's a good time to be uh, somebody who can develop machine learning models. <laughs> okay. Uh, red teaming LLM application. This is yet another course uh, from deeplearning.ai, which is Andrew Eng. And uh, they now have a lot of courses I highly recommend. And uh, yes, so just, I, I think this, this is a good course. Now, most impactful AI workflows. Um, last time I, I was telling about Accenture, who is now um, more than $2 billion in revenue in Gen AI uh, projects per, per, per year. And what they're doing is the same thing. So mostly what they're doing is AI power chatbots. So basically rack systems, right? But there are other uh, things uh, people can do and these are the most uh, common ones. So chatbots, uh, sentiment analysis, personalized recommendations, predictive lead scoring. I was doing it at NDR like five years ago. <laughs> uh, targeted ad campaigns, uh, ad campaigns, uh, sales forecasting, writing, uh, content, post articles, newsletters. Uh, document analysis, inventory management, fraud detection, and uh, working human resources, which is candidate sourcing, screening, employee training, and predictive analytics for attrition. Uh, so you see, there's not that many topics. And uh, uh, if you provide, and you don't even have to provide all of them, if you just, for example, as a consulting firm, concentrate on just doing chatbots, you are golden because this is something almost everybody needs and ready to pay money. Uh, another thing about naive rag, which has extremely poor performance. Uh, so th this is the rag, retrieval augmented generation. I just want to walk through this uh, diagram. So we have some uh, data, some documents. We convert them uh, using some embedding models into vector vectors, right? Uh, and then uh, when the user asks a question, the question also converted to vector. Then we do similarity search to find uh, vectors similar to the query vector. We find those vectors, we find corresponding pieces of text, give these pieces of text, uh, include them in the prompt, and then ask uh, LLM, like chat, uh, chatbot, to answer the original question using the pieces of text uh, which were found. Uh, this is naive uh, rag and uh, it has extremely poor performance. Uh, here is the same thing coming from Amazon. So you see AWS, VPC, so th this is from Amazon documentation. Uh, same th thing, we have documents in S3 buckets. Uh, we uh, put them in Amazon Kendra, which is analog to a vector database. So it's a searchable uh, database. And then when the user asks the question uh, through interface uh, widget, which is called uh, Lex, Amazon Lex, it goes to some Python code, which searches the Kendra to get the pieces of text, which is uh, this part, and then asks large language model to synthesize it into a response which then send send to the user. So this is the same diagram, which is naive rag, and it's absolutely terrible. Uh, why is it terrible? Because uh, Kendra uh, is very primitive. Uh, we spoiled by Google 
search which gives us uh, like very good understanding actually of what you want when you're asking questions it's it's amazing how good google is uh, in comparison to other systems uh, kendra is extremely primitive so you ask about some information uh, which is supposed to be in these legal documents and it finds something but it's more like keyword based uh, it may give you phrase or paragraph but uh, like out of context and uh, then when you try to synthesize well garbage in garbage out it will not give you good answer uh, so what's the solution of course the first thing you need to do you cannot just blindly index the documents you need to pre-process them uh, to the format which uh, Kendra can index in a way that it will be uh, understood and provide reasonable uh, responses. So I, ju I just want to say that j just the fact that you're using like a uh, top platform like AWS and their top offerings like Kendra or the Bedrock API for their models doesn't guarantee good results. You need to put work, you need to prepare data. Uh, there is no substitute uh, to doing your own push-ups. So <laughs> you have to do it. Anyway, uh, miscellaneous things. Um, so Apple has developed a new system called Realm, uh, reference resolution as language modeling. Uh, that improves the Siri, uh, Siri's ability to understand context. Um, so uh, you, you're doing something on the screen uh, and um, you, you, maybe you're talking to the system, whatever, you have some history. So this system takes all this context into account uh, when answering your questions. And uh, as a result, it outperforms ChatGPT in some benchmarks. So this, this is really good, like Apple, good job, definitely. Uh, next, um, open UI. Uh, interesting. So it's open source. Uh, you describe what kind of UI you want, and it builds it for you using uh, React, well, JavaScript, HTML, Svelte, whatever, web components, and so on. Again, amazing. So now it's easy to create user interfaces. Uh, Microsoft Generative AI for Beginners uh, course. It's now version 2. It's again on GitHub. It's a good course. Um, OpenAI now provides ChatGPT for free, and you don't even have to create an uh, account. So you can just start using it. It's, it's like Google. It's available. You don't have to create an account to start using Google. Uh, same thing. OpenAI just wants everybody to use their system. And uh, yeah, remember projections that large language models will become better and it will become free. <laughs> like, <laughs> and we see it's happening. Uh, Microsoft and OpenAI are planning a new data center. It will be in 28, uh, about $100 billion. And the supercomputer uh, structure is called Stargate. So good. OpenAI can clone voice from just 15 seconds of audio. Like this is really, really something, just 15 seconds and then it convert uh, text into voice using your voice. Applicant tracking systems. Um, so what companies now do, they use automatic system to reject applicants before sending them to humans. And uh, yes, they, they're using uh, AI uh, to do that. Uh, Claude Author. This, this is again very interesting. You see it's GitHub and what it is, you give a prompt, you describe what kind of novel you wanted to write and it will write the whole novel. It will create a real ebook, right? It gives you cover art, uh, whatever. So this is uh, amazing. They, so they're using Cloud3 and Stable Diffusion, uh, I guess for graphics. Um, SWE Agent, SWE Agent. So it's open source. And um, uh, remember we spoke about Devin, uh, which is a system to do uh, software development and uh, bug fixing and working with GitHub and so on. So this is similar, but it's completely open source. And there are multiple videos on YouTube very excitingly showing how it, well it works. Uh, Stability AI just released Stable Audio 2, uh, so you can create high quality songs up to three minutes from a single text prompt. Well. Again, good. And uh, this is our crowdsourced arena. It was last updated uh, March 29th. You see the Claude 3 Opus is on the first place, a little bit better than GPT-4, but the difference, you see 1255, 1252 is almost negligible. Well, it's within 95% error, 
So I guess, yeah, well, it's not, an, it's actually statistically valid. And uh, yeah, so you see mostly on the top, we have commercial uh, offerings. Um, the top open source is coming from Alibaba. This is uh, ON 1.5, 72 billion parameter chat model. Mixtral 87B is on 17th place. And uh, we have also Wizard LM here. So this is open source. And this is about layoffs. Um, so you see that uh, in comparison to last year, January and January this year, uh, February, February this year, March, where is March? This March and this March. So this year we have uh, like at least three times less layoffs than it was uh, last year. And in fact, what's happening, the salaries for people who are doing AI are growing and uh, you can even get $1 million salary if you're <laughs> like working in one, uh, one of the top companies. Okay, this is it for today. This is me and thank you.